So in this class, we will discuss about uh, the real time use theory in analysis, uh, which is uh, very popular in the design of snaps, RCC snaps. So we can always uh, find out uh, the collapse load in the case of RCC snaps using this uh, inline theory. So let us see what you mean by inline. An inline is a mine in the plane of the slab along which all reinforcing bars have yielded. That means if all the reinforcement bars that is provided in the RC slab, they are stressed up to the yield stress value. For example, if you are using a FE 415, so yield stress value is FY, that is 415 per mm square. If all the reinforcement bars are uh, uh, taking that, uh, if they have gone up to that uh, value of stress, uh, we say that, uh, that that line or line will form in this slab. So that uh, is nothing but the yield line. So of course, that is an indication of the failure of the slab. So that is why yield line, uh, if you know how to plot the yield line pattern for a uh, given slab with uh, end conditions, uh, definitely you can compute the maximum load, how much that slab can take. So that is known as a yield line analysis. So normally in the case of under-reinforced under sectors, uh, uh, you can see in your uh, RCC subject, you have studied your other than level B level, that they can expect a gradual failure in the case of under-reinforced sectors. So failure is gradual because uh, uh, that uh, steel uh, will be uh, yielded first and then the concrete. Whereas in the case of over-reinforced sections, uh, so concrete uh, is a compression failure. So under-reinforced sections is a tension failure. Whereas, uh, uh, which is gradual, whereas uh, over reinforced sections, they are compression failures when the failure is sudden. So, cracks will develop immediately uh, once the load is reached, or as the load is reached. So, as the boss yield, uh, cracks develop along the yield lines. So, cracks will develop along the yield lines, and the rotation of the slab will occur around those yield lines, which cause excessive deflection. That means, uh, it will be in the form of cracks, of course. But uh, the this plane view is gradual, that is one important thing. That is why this yield line theory is uh, mainly used for un under reinforced sections. So, just uh, as an example, I have given here, I have considered one way slab because normally this analysis, real analysis is uh, used for slabs. Uh. So, in the case of one way slab, you have this uh, length, one dimension is. Uh, uh, more than uh, twice the other dimension. So, L by V is greater than 2, then it is one way slab. In the in case of one way, one way slab subjected to some loading conditions, sir, so the yield line pattern may be like this. If you normally the design of one way slab is similar to design of beams, we take uh, unit width, that is 1 meter width, sir, that is BR 1000 mm in the design and we calculate the reinforcement and all. So, in the case of an under reinforced one way slab, sir, so this is the pattern of the yield line. Now, this uh, one, one important point you can say that yield line pattern depends on the end conditions of the slab. So, different end conditions uh, you have seen in the IS code. Uh, so, there, there will be four edges. Uh, some of the edges may be continuous, some of them may be fixed, some of them may be free, some of them may be simply supported. Uh, so, depending on the different end conditions of the slab, the yield line pattern also depends and it gives a method of estimating collapse load for this slab. That is very important. So, at what time, when the load is, at what load, that particular type of slab will collapse. Normally, we use this in the plastic theory in the case of uh, steel design. So, collapse load or mechanism we call. So, that mechanism of failure, we, we conclude in the case of um, uh, steel structures. But in RC slab, uh, using this theory, here also we can compute the collapse load for the slab. And uh, of course, it takes care of the ultimate uh, load theory. Now, this is uh, another example of the time pattern in two way simply supported slab. So, this is a simply supported slab, but it is two way. So, two way means if the M by B ratio is less than or equal to two, you can say. So, if it is less than or equal to two, you can consider this slab as two way slab. The main structural behavior. Uh, between one way slab and two way slab is main reinforcement is pointed in the shorter direction in the one way slab and distribution is pointed in the two way in the other longer direction. Whereas in the case of uh, two way slab, bending takes place in both the directions and uh, therefore in main reinforcement is pointed uh, in both the directions L and B. 
So that is why it's called as linkages of two-way stack. This is how the yield line pattern uh, will occur. Now there are certain assumptions we have to make in the yield line theory. So these are the assumptions. This lab is under input, as I already told, because it's a tension failure or value failure. Uh, we assume that the slab is under-imposed, then in lines are straight lines, they are not curved lines, they are straight lines, then elastic deformations are negligibly uh, small, they are negligible, you can say elastic deformations are negligible compared with plastic deformations. So actually material, when it is subjected to some external load, uh, actually initially it will be in the elastic state, then it transforms some to plastic state through elastic, elastoplastic uh, transformation. So, plastic deformations very, will be very high when uh, compared to elastic deformations. Elastic deformation will take place within elastic limits. That is, Hooke's law is valid within the elastic limits. After collapse mechanism, slab is treated as a rigid body and entire rotation takes place along the yield line. So, rotation of the slab takes place here. So, that is the meaning of that mechanism. Mechanism means uh, plastic hinge will form and uh, when the plastic hinges are formed at uh, uh, important uh, sections and points in the structure, so the, then uh, the collapse mechanism takes place. So that you know, of course uh, you will be studying in the uh, steel structure design, we will be having beam mechanism, joint mechanism, combined mechanism, something like that. So here also, uh, after the collapse mechanism, after the development of the yield lines, the entire slab is treated as a single entity as a rigid body and the entire rotation takes place along the yield line and it leads to the failure of the slab. Some of the characteristic features of yield lines are these are examination oriented questions, they are very important and I will ask you to write the assumptions and the characteristic features along with the definition and the example. So the first characteristic is they are straight lines. So yield lines are straight lines, they are not curved lines. Second one, they terminate at the boundary of slab or at the intersection of other yield lines. So yield lines end, terminate with the end at the boundaries. So at the boundaries it will end or uh, it will end at the intersection of other yield lines. Suppose if it cuts one more yield line, uh, then uh, it ends there. So that is the meaning. So that is the meaning of that. For example, here I have shown these are the boundaries. These, there are two yield lines here. So this will uh, terminate. So terminate, that means here. This is one line, this is another line, this is one line, another line. There are four in lines here. So one, once it touches the other in line, it will terminate, that will end, that is the meaning. So here also you can see the in lines, they are terminated at the boundaries. Then the third one is they act as axis of rotation. As I already told, when the collapse mechanism reaches up, they will, they will act as axis, x axis, y axis, something like that. About that axis, the slab rotates. Axis of rotations are along the lines of support and pass on columns. So this is another assumption we are going to make. So along the lines of support, the axis of rotations will be and they will always pass on the columns or the supports. Each segment will have axis of rotations, natural or in lines, all along its periphery. So each segment means, so this lab can be divided into so many segments. Each segment will have axis of rotation separately along its periphery, along the boundaries, they will be having uh, axis of uh, rotation. That is the meaning. So these are the characteristic features. Now there are some sign conventions used in the uh, line theory. So if you write a straight line like this, it's, it represents a free edge. If you write straight line with one, one hatch, it is simply supporting edge. If you write straight line and uh, if you hatch it often, there are two hatches fixed on continuous head and a positive wind line is shown by a solid uh, line like this or a small curve like this and a negative wind line uh, represent is represented by a dotted line. So these are some of the uh, sign conventions we are going to use in wind line theory. A positive wind line will, uh, will occur when the tension exists at the bottom, negative wind line occurs when the tension exists at the top, so top of this line, that is the unit. Now there are some inline patterns, examples so I have shown here. So there are these are all different types of slabs, different types of wind conditions will be there. Now you can see here in the first example. So you have simply supported edges. So this is the chain convention here. So it is a simply supported uh, slab or not on, at all of four edges, and this is the inline pattern in that case. And it's a positive inline. 
Next, you, if you go for three sides simply supported, one side free. So this is how the line pattern B or this or this. So this portion you can see either the end line may be like this or the line may be like this. So all these uh, they have done some experiments. So unless you do some experiment, unless you cap some slabs and, and, and apply loads on them and observe the the failure criteria or the cracking pattern or the yield lines uh, and collapse. Uh, they have got uh, the results from experiments. All these are obtained from experiments and those results are used to analyze the slabs using the theoretical equations. Now this is another example where all the four sides are fixed or continuous. So one side will be fixed, other three sides will be continuous like a double hatch you can see. Here you can see that there is dotted line. Dotted line means negative, negative uh, uh, yield line and positive yield line at mid span. You can see uh, in the case of a fixed beam, it is similar to a fixed beam or fixed slab along the four sides. Uh, maximum positive bending moment occurs at the mid span and negative bending moment occurs at the uh, supports of the edges. So that is why at the edges along the periphery you can see negative, negative yield line and uh, in between that is at the mid, mid span you can have the a positive yield line. And here you can see two sides, two sides it is simply supported, two edges, two edges are fixed or continuous. In this case you can see negative uh, yield line here where the edges are continuous or fixed up. and uh, here you can see the positive yield lines at the portion where it is simply supported. Then you can, you can have a triangular slab, triangular slab with simple support, so single hatch means single simple support. So in that case, the yield line may be like this. Okay. Then in the case of a right angle the triangular slab with two edges simply supported, one edge free, you can have a yield line like this. So to the hypotenuse from the apex, the failure uh, pattern or the crack pattern or the yield line pattern may occur. Now here is a circular slab simply supported throughout. You can expect yield lines like this. So the failure pattern may be. The diagonal or something like that, diametrical, diametrical yield lines will form. So these are some of the examples of yield line patterns uh, based on different end, end conditions uh, and slabs. So this, this is an important uh, theory question in the examination. Now in the next video we will design how this yield line uh, theory uh, can be used to design some simple slabs.